G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It's officially grand final week and uh, therefore there is tons of footy stuff flying around. Obviously, as I record this, you got the Brownlow medal tonight. Then of course, it's grand final week and uh, I've got to do videos related to that. And of course, there's still trade rumors flying around, but uh, today something caught my eye and I'm doing an impromptu video and we have finally got clarity on North Melbourne's priority pick situation. It's a topic I've made a video on previously this year, trying to sort of um, decipher what might actually happen to North Melbourne, but we finally got an answer. Obviously, there was a number of different suggestions flying around about what could happen. Uh, the most recent of which was probably that they were going to get a middle of the first round pick in pick 11. Uh, there was talk about them pre-listing Riley Sanders as a next generation academy talent. And originally, I think there was going to be a chat that there was going to be, you know, a start of first round or priority pick after their first pick, which would be pick three this year. But we finally got some clarity. And it's interesting since I found out this news, I've done three different cycles of whether I like it or not. And at the moment, uh, right before I've hit play, I've had a bit of an idea as to what is actually going to happen with these picks. And now I think the AFL has actually made a genius move. So I'll uh, go through the article. North Melbourne has been granted three draft selections as part of its assistance package. They are three first round draft picks, which when I first read this, I was a little bit outraged. I was like, are you serious? I thought it was going to be one. But you know, as, it, uh, as you read the article, you start to get clarity on what that actually is going to look like. So this year's pick will come at the end of the first round, which will be, as it stands, pick 19. And on draft night, that is going to be pushed into the early 20s. Then their next two picks will be next year at the end of next Next year's first round. So again, we're really talking about pick 20 uh, this year and pick 20 and 21 next year. And that's assuming North Melbourne finish bottom again or close to, which they may or may not. It's up to you to decide that. Interesting little tidbit here. The 2024 picks are subject to review, which means that if North Melbourne jump out of the box next year in their first full year under Clarkson, which, you know, is a possibility. And when I say jump out of the box, I mean jump out of the bottom four, then it does read as though that those picks could be taken away. What it also does is if, if those picks are in place next year, kind of removes the AFL of responsibility to give them another priority assistance package next season, which I found interesting too. The Ruse application for assistance came after a Another season in the bottom two on the ladder. That's four in a row for North Melbourne. They've won 12 of the last 84 games. So it's hard not to make a case that if any team's going to qualify for priority pick assistance, it's probably going to be North Melbourne considering their performance over a period of time is definitely quite dire. And I think if West Coast hadn't fallen to a hole as badly as they have, it would be even more stark how poorly North Melbourne's going. So comfortable with the, the concept of a priority pick. I know, I know that people say that it's a uh, reward for incompetence, but that's exactly what every priority pick in the history of time has been. So if we accept that priority picks are going to exist at all, then, uh, then this particular case is justified in being one where a priority pick is given. So this is a fairly big step up from what was given to North Melbourne last year. They were given uh, future picks two and uh, round two and round three, which had to be traded for players. They ended up both at Fremantle, I think. That allowed them to get Griffin, Logan, Darcy, Tucker. Now, those, there's both pros and cons to this particular method. I think I've talked about it already, but it kind of had North Melbourne's hands tied as to what they actually did with the pick. They had to trade it for players, which created a little bit of an imbalance. Um, well, the idea is nice to give North Melbourne some, some more established players, but unfortunately, you no, know, Griffin, Logan's done his ACL now. And the main point of bringing that up is to uh, clarify that this is not going to apply to the this and next year's picks. They can do whatever they want with them. What they have retained though is two extra rookie list spots. I think that's great. Just another sort of low key way to try and acc accumulate talent on their list. And that's certainly in a way that doesn't compromise the rest of the competition. Just on the Riley Sanders thing uh, for a minute. I'm glad this didn't come through because it felt very, very random and arbitrary and a little bit unfair to have Riley Sanders just arbitrarily allowed to be picked up by North Melbourne as part of their next generation academy. And I, I, I don't like it because it sets a weird precedent and maybe it's because I'm a law student, but I like things being able to be established as some degree of pre uh, precedent. Obviously, the precedents played pretty fast and loose in the AFL to begin with, but I don't like it because you couldn't apply it to another team down in the future. Uh, you couldn't use this as a precedent because it's arbitrary exactly how good this next generation academy player is. And then you have to sort of wait for a team in the future to have a similarly talented next generation academy player for it to be an even example. It just, it, I hope that makes sense, but I, I'm glad this didn't come through. So before uh, getting into exactly what I think is going to happen with these picks and whether I like it, uh, there's a little quote here. After assessing the club's position, this is from Andrew Dillon, the special assistance package can help the club deliver on its strategy for overall improvement. So 
we know that North Melbourne's been in constant dialogue with the AFL this year about another special assistance package. And it is interesting to me, the prospect that North Melbourne has actually been very transparent with the AFL about what they intend to do with the, the package. And it seems to be a bit of a collaborative effort, which I don't mind because I think there's going to be something very specific done with these picks. So on paper, pick 20 this year and pick 20 and 21 next year, I'm sort of plucking those numbers at the moment. They'll probably get both of those will get pushed back. But my first reaction is, um, you know, that's not actually that valuable to North Melbourne, right? Because North Melbourne either want top end talent or they want established players. Now, obviously with those picks, they do have the flexibility to then say, go for a Jack Billings or a Zach Fisher. And that was my initial reaction of what they were going to do with those picks. The last thing North Melbourne really need is to go to the draft with pick 20 or well, three picks in the 20s over the next two years. That's the last thing they need. To clarify that, you know, we we know that, you know, struggling teams have no real issue getting access to picks. Honestly, my, my thoughts of, of what the AFL should do with clubs really struggling at the bottom and the ladder is probably make concessions around soft cap and allowing a little bit more support for, you know, development coaches and resources and stuff like that. I think that's actually a pretty sound move, to be honest, particularly for a club like North Melbourne. But one thing that occurred to me is that now North Melbourne have the best possible hand for trying to trade for Gold Coast pick four. So previously, you know, we know Gold Coast is going to be trading those picks for later picks and future picks. We know that pick four is for sale and I have done phantom drafts where I thought it would go to Richmond or the Bulldogs and I'm kind of just guessing there based on what's been reported and uh, the draft strength hand of each of those clubs. But now I think North Melbourne in a roundabout kind of way can use their picks to end up with Gold Coast pick four anyway. So there's a chance they walk out of this draft with Curtin and McKercher, which was originally what they were tipped to get anyway. So we know that with the Jed Walter bid, it's probably going to be pick three and pick five that they end up with, assuming they're the ones to bid on Walter. So now suddenly my prediction is that North Melbourne use these picks to accumulate the points to offer Gold Coast an offer they can't refuse and North Melbourne will end up with two top five picks anyway. Further to that, you look at next year's draft where North Melbourne have two late first round picks as well as their first initial pick. And uh, there is a lot of father, son and academy players in next year's first round. I'm not fully across it yet, but I know that there's at least two. There's Levi Ashcroft, who's Will Ashcroft's younger brother. And there is Welsh from South Australia, the son of Scott Welsh and his first name actually is evading me right now, but they're not the only two either. So North Melbourne are then in a really good position to trade again with, you know, Brisbane or Adelaide for an improved draft position then as well. So really what the AFL's handed uh, North Melbourne here is potentially a couple of top five picks. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, I'm going early crow there, uh, pun intended. But I reckon I feel pretty confident now that North Melbourne end up with these top five picks. And I think the AFL know exactly what they're doing here. And I can't help but applaud it. They couldn't be seen to be giving North Melbourne a top five pick, but they're probably going to end up with one anyway. And just as an aside, it does appear, this is only rumors and I could be making myself look very silly in the very near future. But the latest thought on the uh, Ben Mackay situation is that the offer from Essendon is probably not going to get band one compensation, which means North Melbourne getting pick three is is probably not going to happen. There is a possibility, of course, North Melbourne end up with picks two, three, and four here. Well, actually, sorry, it'll be two, three, and five. I don't think that's going to happen now, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't want to flame North Melbourne fans uh, unnecessarily, but what I read is that Essendon are willing to trade for Ben Mackay and they're not willing to give up their first round draft pick. It's just a rumor doing the rounds at the moment. But if that happens, you know, let's say Mackay, and this is going to flame people, gets traded for a couple of picks in the 20s that Essendon hold. Again, it kind of really does help their ability to get you know top five picks this year and next year as well so anyway guys that's just my thoughts on the priority pick situation very interesting times i am uh, waiting to hear back obviously on this ben mckay compensation situation because i want to do another phantom draft and things have already changed it's exciting but as always let me know in the comment section what you think about this whole situation subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video cheers